for all Chandarana food plus supermarkets following claims of racial bias. Mm. In a text message to Newsroom, Sonko has therefore ordered his county officers to ensure enforcement of the shutdown starting tomorrow. But exactly what has led to this action? Mm. Let's take a look here. Kenyans have reacted angrily to a leaked email by an employee of Chandarana Food Plus Supermarkets, which appears to suggest that the company had launched a promotional campaign targeting whites only. Well, Kenyans took to social media to condemn the company, terming the sentiments uh, in the email as racist and asking shoppers to boycott its outlets. Mm, the supermarket has, however, apologized and denied the claims. Well, let's take a look at that email. Writing in poor English to a marketing and events managers, an employee identified as marketing specialist Rima Patel uh, proposes the introduction of free gift vouchers in promotional campaign. Mm, she goes on to say, and I quote, as we are now focusing on white people to attract our supermarkets, we have already 13 branches in Nairobi. Well, she obviously meant that the exercise was aimed at marketing the supermarkets, which has 13 branches spread across mm. Nairobi. Mm, now, the email sparked protests on social media platforms, with former Kiambu Governor William Kabogo saying all native Africans should resist Chandarana. Kaboga says, quote, we should not buy from them. The whites will. Well, another user, Kir Kadep, says, I usually shop at Chandarana Muthaiga branch. If this is the case, then I resist with immediate effect. Wow. The Consumers Federation of Kenya, Kofek, weighs in on the matter, posting, quote, I pledge to never buy from Chandarana supermarket. Racism should and must be treated with the contempt it deserves. Another one here from Mary Jabulana who says, Rima marketing specialist, my foot. She <laughs> should know that simple segmentation shows that the foreign shoppers cannot make Chandarana a viable and profitable mm. chain. Shame on her and her fellow lot. Mm, let's sample one more post by Paulo Suarez Borges. He says, as a white guy, Chandarana client must be not racist. My way to protest about this is to avoid shopping in your supermarket till the end of the year. Well, uh, reacting to the criticism, the supermarket has offered an apology. It says Chandarana Food Plus uh, would like to sincerely apologize for the unfortunate and insensitive narrative written by one of our very new and recent hires in the marketing department. Oh, and it goes on to say that Rima Patel's lack of proficiency in the English language is an easy way to justify this horrendous act. It does not make it excusable in any way. Well, it's not a reflection of what we stand for, uh, not in any remote way. We once again bow our heads and profusely apologize to everybody. Now, the chain denies being racist and says it has been serving Kenyans of all demographics for more than 50 years. Well, let's take a look at what the implications of this are, Jeff. Of mm -hmm. course, after uh, Governor Mike Sonko decided to it's revoke the licenses. licenses yeah. So we have a advocate of the High Court, Mudomi Fiankolu, who's joining us right now over the phone. Um, if you can hear me, Mudomi, when it comes to the claims of racism, uh, if someone was to sue Chandarana, for instance, what would they need to prove in a court of law? Uh, in our law, you would need to prove that there is differential treatment of custody based on uh, any one or more of the uh, factors that are prescribed upon it. Perhaps the starting point should be to say that uh, there is no room for this type of conduct under our constitution of the year 2010, uh, discrimination on the ground of race, ethnic or social origin or status or culture. And many other things. I think the run is just unfortunately is coming uh, at a time when we've been hearing uh, similar versions of discrimination on other grounds. But the long and short of it, from a point of law, is that uh, it is prohibited both in private and uh, public places. And uh, if you move the claim, the court will be able to assess uh, and award you damages. Uh, again, is that kind of conduct. And we have precedent. I think the court uh, recently, in the last two or three years, uh, slapped uh, uh, damages against uh, golf clubs, uh, against uh, motels and uh, establishments for this kind of conduct. So the long and short of it really is that uh, this 
this behavior to me is true, is unlawful. There is no place for it. But for me, my concern is not uh, the legal one, uh, because that straightforward. Uh, I would be more worried about the socioeconomic and political dimensions of the society that we are in, that create incentives for people to discriminate against others. The various grounds are prohibited in our Article 27 of our Constitution. Madomi, if you can hear me, it's Jeff Kuenanga. Real quick, what Governor Sonko did today, is that legal or will we have lawyers rushing to the High Court tomorrow to stop this? I think it is illegal, even if we assume uh, for argument's sake that uh, uh, these allegations of criminals in Rana are approved and whatnot, there is something called due process. You do not uh, wake up from nowhere because you are annoyed or because a punch your face or done or whatever other means you need no felony and say your license is cancelled. There is a whole question of uh, compliance with the due procedures. Licenses and permits are issued uh, pursuant to certain legal procedures and uh, there is there is equally a procedure and process of cancelling uh, business licenses and permits. And I don't think the long and short of it is, I think, again, uh, Tonko is overreacting and overreaching himself. And, uh, his conduct is counterproductive because uh, even if we were to assume that uh, he has good basis for doing it, not following the law, he is establishing a very easy uh, 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 situation where the company will have his actions cancelled by the court for non compliance with due process. Mm. And you mentioned, of course, the socioeconomic impact this would have. Uh, beyond that, we know, the, as you said, the governor has acted outside of legal bounds with his action. But for something to be done, if someone is not going to go to the court of law and they feel they still need justice, what else would they do? Of course, we've seen people on social media saying, we're going to boycott. What more could be done? For me, I think that the challenge that arises from uh, this and many other similar unfortunate incidents is we need a conversation as a society. Have we established the sort of society that has uh, equal uh, members whereby every citizen is treated with the dignity, uh, with the respect that it is uh, we Have we created an equal society? Because I don't know why I have a feeling that uh, uh, while it is easy to pick and run as a runner's conduct, assuming it is true, it is a reflection of the socioeconomic distortion that exists in the society we have built, which is a very unequal society. Uh, because I believe if, if, if we had a society where both white, black, uh, yellow, whatever the race had equal opportunities in life, it would not actually matter what color of the race. So for me, I think we are talking more about the symptoms rather than the disease itself. And that's what happened in this country. We rushed the legalistic discussion and meet the broader underlying problem yeah indeed okay let's i'm, I'm sure this story is not going to go away anytime soon victoria not at all yeah Madhomi Thiankolu, advocate of the high court thanks so much for joining us appreciate that